lot of uh, parameters that uh, you have to take in um, account. Uh, the most challenging part is to identify all possible scenarios. And uh, the next steps are to uh, statistical, maybe a statistical analysis of a large number of random uh, simulations and to create a Jupyter notebook to make it uh, publicly available. So what I did is that uh, I took uh, the uh, weather exchange distribution. Uh, can you move the slide? Nice. Uh, this is the weather exchange distribution. We, have, uh, we will mint 100 million tokens in a 10 year period. And uh, you can see how we will uh, distribute them. And the token release, uh, how much token will be released, will be emitted every year in the next 10 years. And to the next slide, uh, can you say the slide? Thank you. Uh, you can uh, see the result of um, it is a token simulation is the, pri the price with uh, some random, with every hypothesis at random. Um, meaning that, um, can I share the spreadsheet? Nice. So um, I started with a um, token distribution. Uh, this is just uh, for, uh, for information. The release schedule is important and the random to token behavior is um, like with the, where the magic happens. So uh, I initialized the pool in uh, Uniswap, uh, the V2 actually. So whenever I see a, a price projection, meaning that to have uh, this um, USDT and this WXM at Uniswap V2, initialize the pool with 5 million WXM and 1 million in USDT. Uh, we have a pre-sale, pre um, and this is every year uh, based on the distribution and the release schedule. Uh, what will happen? The result of uh, each year, uh, the, each year is uh, separated in two parts, the first half and the second half. The result of uh, each half is uh, this, uh, uh, is described in this box and has uh, the price, the circulation supply, the market cap, and the fully diluted valuation. Um, and the, the same for the second half of the year. So when, when we go to where all uh, uh, the information is gathered, we can see some charts that uh, every time you press the show me first number, it just uh, uh, give you another simulation. So uh, the goal of this uh, spreadsheet is that uh, um, we can have a price projection, a circulation supply projection, a market cap projection, a fully diluted uh, valuation projection uh, based on um, assumptions like the first year up, let me go okay here the first half we are we are giving we ha, um, daily we are giving to station owners 14,000 uh, tokens so uh, 56 percent and this is the random part uh, they are selling their tokens. They are they they are having an airdrop, um, one one million and a half to, uh, one million and a half uh, tokens at airdrop. So twenty percent of them are um, selling their tokens. Fifty-seven percent. This is another random uh, uh, number. They are selling from the common investors. We we'll have the burn option, like when we uh, sell services, uh, we burn the equi equivalent amount of uh, tokens. 
uh, in first year we are going to, we are projecting that we will uh, have 1 million to 150,000 in uh, services so this is the, the equivalent of uh, 2 million tokens um, we have some speculators that uh, they, they are going to buy. So in when everything happens here, the token will be at uh, 30 cents. So I believe I finished, so, except that to have questions. Uh, if you ask me that um, if uh, this is a valid uh, option, I can uh, I can tell you uh, with certainty that uh, the market is unpredictable, unpredictable and uh, whatever you do, you can never um, time the market. Uh, but um, uh, def it's definitely a starting point to um, to understand that uh, which part is playing the most important, uh, which part. Uh, um, which is the most important part, if the selling pressure is high, is, if the buy pressure is high, uh, what happens? How the token mechanic, mechanics work? That's my project. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Giannis? Um, maybe me. So that was like a thought experiment only, right? Or is the WXM token an actual token that is being launched somewhere? It is, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I work at the WeatherXM. At WeatherXM, we are having uh, weather stations that uh, we, reward, we reward them with uh, WeatherXM tokens. So uh, we released our white paper uh, last week. And uh, this is the... Um, uh, tokenomics, the distribution and the release schedule uh, published on the, the white paper. So I took this uh, data and I make this uh, presentation. Okay, I believe next up we have Yulia. So I was working on creating a Q&A forum for BLN Launchpad. Next slide, please. So what I've been able to achieve in the past uh, two weeks is uh, actually launch the Q&A forum for Protocol Labs Network Launchpad. Uh, I've uh, put the link here in text so you can open it and uh, maybe push some buttons, uh, try to ask some questions maybe. What we have achieved um, basically designed this community on Piranha, created a list of tags and keywords for better search and SEO. And also we've been able to collect a list of Q and A's, um, all the questions and answers asked during the educational courses from V6 to V8. We optimized all of the questions and answers to suit the forum question format. I know that maybe you have um, some kind of idea about this, but um, People who work with Stack Overflow usually ask questions or maybe write the answers in a bit of different format than usually they do in Discord or maybe Slack. And um, that's what we've been able to do. And also we've loaded Walker with additional work to check the relevance of this information. But um, to be honest, we didn't want to load him with all of this work, but he decided he want to take an active part um, of establishing this Q&A forum. So here we are. What remains to be achieved, uh, and we are really dedicated to achieve this, is setting up uh, the community and posting all of the questions and answers uh, that were optimized uh, by us, by our team, and uh, checked for relevance um, from the side of Walker. And we also want to connect the bots for Slack and uh, Discord. And then uh, last but not least, definitely not least, is educating the community on how to use Piranha. Um, Walker and I set some kind of a deadline for some of the 
uh, steps here. Uh, we want to set the community up before ATH Denver. And um, here's something uh, more. Our development team works on updating our integration bots for Slack, Telegram, and Discord. And if some of you don't know, Piranha is like a bridge between um, really commonly known methods of knowledge sharing in Web3, like uh, via Discord and Slack, and uh, classical Web2 methods, like via Stack Overflow or just by searching in Google search, for example, we connect Google search and uh, all of the community channels in Discord, Slack, and Telegram. And uh, right now we have the first version of our integration bots, which uh, yet only notifies people about new questions and answers on the protocol. But uh, I guess the latest, it will be March when we will put in production, uh, release a new version of bots, uh, which will allow people to integrate the Discord, Slack and Telegram accounts with the account on Piranha. Uh, so that people gain reputation and um, NFTs while participating in knowledge sharing process right in Discord Slack, for example, which is relevant for Launchpad. And uh, also, uh, we, we will release the opportunity um, for people to ask questions and answer them directly via Slack, Telegram, or Discord, which will streamline the whole process. So yeah, here is my progress, I guess. I'm open to new questions. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Awesome project, Julia. This is amazing. Uh, just a question. When I know you said you set some deadlines. When can we... I'm really excited. When can we expect to see it? Um, yes, we want to post all of the questions and answers before ATH Denver, so mm -hmm. in like a week, maybe latest two weeks, and the, then we can connect the bots, and I guess we can start community education maybe in, in the beginning of Mar March, maybe mm -hmm. mid-March, latest. Okay, all right, that's great, great to hear. All right. Well, great job to Yulia and Giannis. Uh, absolutely wonderful projects. Yeah, so I'm working at Chainsafe and we are making uh, the Rust implementation of Filecoin. So we have a, an ongoing client implementation. And my project was uh, to, to add a new uh, subcommand to interact with the Filecoin API. And basically, it's very much similar that in that in Go Ethereum. I'm I'm not sure if people are familiar with the Ethereum. So, yeah, and um, I will I will show you a demo. It's maybe more interesting than just talking. So basically, when you run um, Forest, you have a binary for running the node, but you have a, also another binary which is CLI for like interacting with Filecoin API. So basically, if I just type help, I can see everything like to interact with Filecoin with like the wallets or the peers, etc. And what I did for the launchpad is adding a new subcommand to attach to a JavaScript console. So I can show you. I just need to type attach. I have some environment variable for connecting to um, a distant node that runs on uh, digital ocean right now. So I can show you that I'm connected using this command or maybe this one, it's more compact. And I can show you the wallets. I have a few, maybe I have some history here, yeah. So you can see that I have created a bunch of address. So let's say I want to, to send to another one. Maybe, so I need to, to make um, the default address with some tokens in it, of course. So let's take this one. I hope everything will work. <laughs> okay. 
Now you can see in bold the default address, and now I can send some field. So I have this command, which is a, a built-in in the in the console, and I can choose pick the first argument is the destination. So let's take this one, and I will send forty thousand auto fields. And let's say now I want to print just after the wallet again, so I can see the the um, the new address with the with, the, with these amounts. But I will sleep for like two tip sets. So that the message can be mine. So let's let's use this built-in command. Sleep tip set two, and then show the wallet again. And we should be good. So let's see if it works. Uh, and maybe we can we we can save um, the message so we can check um, on the on an explorer like the uh, Akalibnet explorer. And um, we can let's try. So this will take like a bit, maybe one minute or or less. I, I'm not sure. Are there loads? Of, can, can I ask? Is is this uh, JavaScript? Are you yeah, the console is in a, it's basically like like in Node.js. So you have a you can type JavaScript, and you can okay. load a JavaScript model if you want. And there's the Filecoin API that is binding, bind, binded, binded. So right now it's more like a proof of concept. I have a few like uh, endpoints for for the wallet API or for the peers API or for the the states or the sync API to know if the if the node is sync or not, etc. And yeah, it's does yeah, it answer awesome. your question? Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Can can you send any any links to to that? Uh, I guess after or or. or yeah, the, so the repo you... is is um, here. So that's the forest repository. Mm -hmm. And I can show you, send you a link. Thanks. And you can build it. You have like um, some images for like. Um, uh, Docker, et cetera. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. And 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 the JavaScript part is in the in the forest repository as well. Actually, we have a built-in um, console mm -hmm. inside Forest. So you don't need to install JavaScript. Okay. Yeah, nice. Thanks. Taking a while, but I'm sure it will it will be good in a few seconds. So that was so the, the, the goal of being able to attach to the client would be to be able to connect from your browser to um, a client running on your machine or yeah, you you can already do that. Let's say I have a browser with some web script, and I can connect to a, my to a, to the forest node using uh, the RPC JSON API. But I wanted to do it within Forest directly, so that's a, that's a small tool. So now you can see I have the forty thousand auto field, and I can check on a on a node explorer. Uh, so if I print just M. I have the CID of the message, and I, I can just check on, let's say, field scan explorer here, typing the, the, the CID. Okay, just now, and you can see the amount, and it was mined by some node, I guess. And yeah, that's it. That's my demo. All right. Maybe. I have one. How difficult do you think it would be to integrate this into other web applications? So if I have if I have a website that I that I want to connect with this um, with this library, how easy would it be to to do that integration and and use? Uh... You can already do it because Forest implements uh, the RPCGs and API. Not everything, but a lot of the 
a lot of it. So you can already, already do it. If you have some website like with running some Node.js backend and some front end, you can just connect to the to a forest node or a lotus node. That works already. All right. Awesome. Thanks. I love how it costs you way more gas fee than what you sent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was free, so let's let's use it wisely. And yeah, you can as well do like just type a JavaScript command using the exec flag. So if I do like, let's sleep for five seconds and then we call the common shutdown and this will shut down the node. So shut down. So that's not very wise to do, but let's try. And let's see here. So you see the forest node running, validating, oops, shutting down Tokyo, forest finish shutdown. So that's not good, but you can do it if you want. Do you know if forest loads the the full node or, or the, the full history or just like uh, more as a light node? No, forest is right now, it's just, it can follow the chain and it doesn't, it can sync with a snapshot. Uh, it's not ready. It's it's mostly like Lotus, except that we don't have everything like minor part, etc. But we it's an ongoing implementation, so keeps mm -hmm. your gotcha. expectation low. Gotcha, gotcha. Thanks. I I just want you to know that I don't know what Chain Safe does outside of the Forest implementation, like. I feel yeah. like we've just had so many of your folks come through and everyone works on forest. Yeah, so ChainSafe is about uh, working on protocol like uh, SRM or Filecoin, implementing alternative clients and Polkadot, et cetera, and doing some services like, I guess, writing some smart contracts. And they have a gaming SDK, SDK too for NFTs and, and so on. I guess it would make sense that the people working on Forest are more interested in yeah. the DL launchpad than the people working on the gaming uh, SDK. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I met Alex from your legal team at Youth, uh, no, at DevCon. It was cool. Uh, mm. Yeah. So, yeah. I, have, so I do know other people at Forest or at oh. they exist, but it's just funny. Thanks, Yolan. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else before? Um, before? Yes, I I do. Um, All this right. Is long. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm in, I'm on computer that doesn't come with the no, camera. No, you're good. Um, um, yeah, I'm also from ChainSafe and working on Forest. So, but what I got to show is uh, it's a a web swap a web app uh, built with Rust LibDB compiled into a web assembly. So let me. Uh, so, uh, I made this demo uh, pretty simple. Um, most of the work are, are behind the scene. So basically, I um, like in the uh, Rust ecosystem, I couldn't find a uh, base web implementation that compiles to WebAssembly. So I um, implemented one uh, and uh, use it in Forest. Uh, and I have a last demo. It's uh, actually very simple. So basically it starts a server, the, the server, uh, so this is the address and the, these are the random blocks created upon a start. Uh, and, and so I have a, a web page uh, and it's here. Uh, so I I I just copy paste the um, the the address of the server here. So I I connect uh, through a web socket and I just query the the block CID. So first I use some random CIDs. Uh, I get a response. The server doesn't have it. And uh, if I uh, 
I'm just copy paste something exists on server. I can get the the block. So and, and that's all. So the um, the, the the demo is really simple. But um, later on, we could um, probably uh, if we connect to the Falcon network, we could probably build a block inspector uh, with with um, almost zero effort. You know, we don't need to like build a RESTful API to to provide the data. We just use the the base web, which is already available uh, in uh, Falcon nodes like Lotus, like Forest, and probably the only extra work to do is to to um, let uh, to listen on the the web socket endpoint, and that's it. Uh, so this is all what I'm going to show. Um, and uh, any questions? Did they have this at some repository or or, or something, or is it just local? Uh, yes, it's also under um, the forest. Uh, it's some subfolder, and that's it for me. If no uh, questions, I will stop sharing. All right. Really, really amazing projects today. Um, again, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Alex, I love that we can always count on you being here. You're like Launchpad's biggest fan. It's my favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, if you all would like to connect more, definitely reach out to each other via Filecoin Slack. And I am so excited to see where all of these projects had. It's been, a, there are some projects from like back in April that are really big now or projects that I've seen like really take off, which is really, really cool on my end. So I'm excited to see where these go.